How do legal fees work in divorce? Hi, I'm Bill Farias, founder of Farias Family Law, and this is a very common question and with good reason. If you're moving toward divorce and you're going to make a significant investment uh, hiring a firm, you want to know how they handle legal fees. So I'm going to give you sort of an overview of how legal fees work. Uh, but as part of this also i'm going to explain how we handle legal fees different firms handle legal fees differently so you want to make sure you do your homework and understand how the firm you work with is going to handle that issue and what's expected of you what's expected of the firm so first of all the firm uh, most firms typically require a deposit for a retainer and that deposit is intended to cover the immediate work ahead so some firms will quote you a deposit for five thousand dollars some for ten thousand some for twenty thousand this really depends on the firm you're working with um, in some circumstances, the level of quality that you're getting, because if you shop around, you'll find some attorneys who will take a very low deposit to jump in on your case. And I, will be ver I would be very careful uh, under those circumstances. Um, you also have issues that are in play that impact the deposit amount. So for example, if the firm is going to be dealing with sizing up a business, sizing up the income for that business, sizing up the uh, value of that business for purposes of property division, then that's gonna require more work and effort. Also, if there is um, contested parenting time or custody, that's something that can also require a lot of time and work. So typically what firms do is they build that into their retainer request so you can expect a retainer request um, i think for a reputable firm for anywhere from you know five thousand up to ten fifteen twenty thousand um, dollars here in 2023 our retainer request is typically at about six thousand nine hundred dollars roughly for a divorce again give or take depend depending on what the issues are and where the case is at so that's how the initial deposit works. And the initial deposit, you have to remember, is not a payment to the firm. It is a deposit in a trust account and your money sits there and the firm typically will bill off of that deposit, off of that money as they do work on the case. So that's how most firms operate. Um, this brings me to my next topic of flat fees versus hourly billing. Different firms handle this uh, differently, but some firms charge a flat fee for the entire case or certain things that they do during the case. We do flat fees for documents, so you would get a list and we'll get a list of documents in advance and how much they each cost, and also some very limited events, like if it's a, a quick hearing or a meeting, we may quote you a flat fee for that. But for the most part, we do hourly billing because we have found that it's the only fair way to do it, right? If we quote flat fees for big chunks, what ends up happening is one of the two parties um, ends up getting a raw deal. So if everything's resolved super quickly and efficiently, then the client tends to overpay. And if complex issues come up or things get heated and dicey and it requires a lot more work than what was paid by the client uh, on a flat fee arrangement, then the firm gets hurt financially. So my opinion based on doing this for well over a decade now is that hourly billing is really the only fair way to do it in family law because of the lack of predictability again we get some cases that come in we think it's going to go super smooth and things blow up and the opposite we get cases that we think are going to be complex and take a lot of time and they're resolved quickly and efficiently so with hourly billing you're basically paying for the work that's being done based on the hourly rate of the individual doing the work and our paralegals and attorneys have different rates 
Um, and that ranges from $150 an hour up to $500 an hour, depending on the individual and the position. So now once the money is in a trust account, the firm bills off of that amount um, on an ongoing basis. We send the client updated statements detailing the work that was done, how long it took to do the work, and the cost. So a very common question that people ask, which is a very good question, is how much is this going to cost overall? And the way that it works is how much your case costs really depends on where you fall on the spectrum of time and involvement and work that your case requires. So on one end of the spectrum, we have cases that are resolved very quickly and efficiently. We do our best to work around the court system to get people to the finish line as efficiently as we can. However, there are some cases that just require more work, more time, and sometimes that's because of the complexity of the issues. It may be that there are some complex financial issues or uh, custody is a contested matter and that's gonna require more time and work. Um, and sometimes the court schedule gets in the way and cases are bumped out and you have to prepare for them again. Sometimes it's the individual or the attorney on the other side who is difficult and that in and of itself requires more work and results in the case taking longer. So if the case is resolved quickly and efficiently and there's money left over in trust, then um, when the, the case is done, the firm will simply refund whatever money's left. If you run out of money in trust and a further deposit is required, then we will talk to you about what's happening, what's ahead, and the anticipated costs. So what we do to offset the lack of certainty in legal fees, because again, it's very difficult to determine at the outset what the total cost is gonna be because you have these different factors that we can't, really get a firm grasp on right at the outset of the case. As things start moving along, we get, get a better feel for what's resolvable, what isn't. But because of the overall lack of certainty, what we do is we do an ongoing cost benefit analysis with clients so that they have the information they need to make smart decisions every step of the way. And what that sounds like and what that looks like is if an issue comes up and there is a disagreement between you and the other party, we will go through um, this sort of breakdown and analysis where we will say, okay, client, here is the issue. Let's figure out how important this is to you. This is what we think a judge would do with this issue if we were to bring it in front of a judge. And here is what it's gonna cost. And we factor in not only the monetary cost, the money you pay, but also the time and the effort and the work that you have to put into preparing for that event. And so with this information, you can now make an educated decision about what is and isn't worth investing in, right? Part of what makes for a, a successful divorce is having a client who is informed, educated, and can make rational and reasonable decisions about what to invest in, which battles to fight, right? Not everything is um, worth pursuing. And so we give you the info you need to make these smart decisions every step of the way. So that's how legal fees work. If you have any other questions about legal fees, you can contact us 508-675-0464. You can email us at info at farriasfamilylaw.com. If you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to our channel, share it with anyone you think might benefit from it. And you can also find us on social media at Farias Family Law. Thank you. Have a good day.